Ladies and gentlemen, I am Paul, U.S. Army Combat Veteran. It is July 15th, 2022, and this is your daily Ukraine update. And we are going to break down if the Russians are trying to get a little creative. Let's get into it. So, what is interesting is that usually my Deep State Live map is one of the most reliable and up-to-date maps. Uh, but for today, June... Uh, at least the most recent update doesn't have any real changes to the front. You can see it even says their last update just had some minor clarifications. But what I find most interesting is that in fact, Russia has taken some level of territory even despite its operational pause. And as you can see, the crucial town of Bohorodichne, right? As we've talked about, this is the bridge over the river Donetsk. Uh, the Sevierski Donetsk and the Ukrainian, it is hotly contested. It is one of the last intact bridges. And when we look at this map here, we can see that he, basically everywhere east of Bohorodichne, the Russians have been held to the north side of the Sevierski Donetsk. And this river is allowing them, is forming, sort of helping to form this pocket of safety and security for Slovyansk and Kramatorsk, right? So if the Russians are able to somehow cross the Seversky Donetsk, then these two main cities are going to be in considerable danger. So how do they do it? Well, Bohorodichne has been fought over for weeks, and they're, while the Russians are making incremental progress, uh, Ukrainian defenses have been extremely, extremely tight between Bohorodichne, Dolna. Uh, it, it's just a, it, the terrain favors the defenders considerably, right? Uh, if you've been in this, watching these updates at all, you know that this is open ground right here. It's hard to, for anyone to push across this area. But what's interesting is when we look at the invasion map, we see that it includes a push from Russian forces that is not reflected in the other map. And what I mean by that first, this argues that actually the Ukrainians are still contesting the bridge over Bohorodichne, uh, which I, you know, is so, the front line there is so fluid that this wouldn't surprise me if this is changing on a daily basis. But when we look over here, we can see the Russians are attempting to circumvent the Ukrainian defenses, right? The Ukrainian forces have dug in between Bohorodichne and Dolna. They're using this river here as a sort of augmented defensive line, but the Russians are attempting to go around. They're flanking all the way around. They've seized the village of Kuruluka and are pushing into the Ukrainian defenders from the side. Now, again, the terrain is not super favorable. These, these wood lines you're seeing, the green represents wood uh, or, or wooded areas. That can actually be both good and bad for someone on offense, right? We've seen Ukrainian drones are commonly used to direct artillery fire for in, in reconnaissance roles, and drones have a harder time seeing through the woods. Uh, but it can also be hard because tanks and other armored vehicles, some of Russia's biggest military advantages in terms of, of armor, artillery, like heavier weapons, they can't move through woods like this. So they may be effectively canalized uh, and be struggling to move through this sort of, of restrictive terrain. And for the defenders who already have a chance to dig in, set up their fields of fire, this can actually be pretty tough. So I'll be curious to know how successful this flanking maneuver is and if it's actually just a test of the uh, Ukrainian defenses or if this is part of a real push to try to fold the defensive forces at least up to this river here. So that is is of course the biggest update. The only other news we have is that supposedly the volunteer battalions that we were discussing yesterday that every federal territory in Russia was required to provide. Of course, the uh, overly enthused Ramzan Kadyrov, the Chechen uh, strongman who is, is 
in charge of the semi-independent Chechnya, claims that one of the four new battalions he's been forming has already deployed to Ukraine. Sort of suspect that perhaps this is the one battalion that probably is made up of battle-seasoned, combat-hardened folks. It may also be a battalion that he has already stood up and trained, and when Russia asked for one, he says, hey, I actually already have this battalion sitting right here. Though it's worth noting that when you are someone like Kadyrov, uh, there is a large segment of anti-Kadyrov Chechens, and he needs to make sure he has enough uh, policing forces uh, to maintain his grip on power against his rivals right there in Chechnya. So always a trade-off when you're a strong man, uh, you know, force is the only currency, people like that understand. And so when you start burning your forces in any sort of foreign war, especially one for Chechens, this really doesn't have an impact on Chechnya or uh, other than sort of a, in a absolute broadest vaguest sense um <clears throat> so it's tough to burn combat power and strength that you need on a cause that isn't really relevant to you anyway that is all i had for today guys as always if you want some uh breakdowns of videos that are just too spicy for youtube usually combat videos check out the patreon thanks to my lieutenant tier patrons i'll see you guys in the next one